No matter what you do in life to get you through, are you walking and talking with the Lord? While working or at play, do you take the time to pray? Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Be honest, kind, and true in everything you do. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Do you go to him in prayer? He knows our every care. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? When hurt or feeling pain, don't take his name in vain. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Tell people that he cares, our burdens he will share. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Be honest, kind, and true in everything you do. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Do you go to him in prayer? He knows our every care. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? The road of life is long if you travel it alone. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? He will take the steps with you if you only ask him to. Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Be honest, kind, and true in everything you do are you walking and talking with the lord do you go to him in prayer he knows our every care are you walking and talking with the lord are you walking and talking with the lord Our first reading today can be found on page 112 from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 2 to 4 and 9 to 15. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And the second reading is found on page 1821 from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. 
There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when we ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Here ends the reading of the word. Our morning's gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you were looking for me not because, we, you saw, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. And then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he, he has sent. And so they asked him, what miraculous sign will you give that we may see and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to join you, continue to join you on this path, on this journey together of mission and ministry in this community and in our part of the world and uh, look forward to the ways God will continue to use us together um, to create an impact of life and love and grace to the world around us. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading, our Old Testament, this reading, this morning, is, is a part of the story of Exodus, of the Exodus. The, this famous story, this infamous story, it's, it's probably one of the most important stories of Israel's history and of the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament in the Bible. 
and it focuses on the newly freed slaves. They had only a few weeks prior, only a few weeks ago, left Egypt. Moses led them out of Egypt. The Israelites escaping the bonds of slavery under Pharaoh's regime. You know the story, right? And if, if not, you may remember the TV version uh, from years back where Charlton Heston played the role of Moses. And so here they are, the Israelites. They are walking along in the blazing hot desert, wandering in the wilderness. And I can imagine their thoughts and their conversations going something like this. Who is this Moses character? Eighty years ago, he, sa he was saved from the river and raised up in a palace. He grew up with a life of privilege while the rest of us and our ancestors were slaves. This is no way, there's no way that he understands us and our life. And now he shows up and claims that God spoke to him in a burning bush. Now, no doubt he got our attention with the whole, you know, uh, showdown with Pharaoh kind of deal. I mean, that was pretty impressive. He convinced Pharaoh to let us go out of slavery. Maybe, maybe he does have something to say to us. And we got out and we left in the middle of the night and then Pharaoh's army came after us and the waters of the sea parted and we made it across safely and the Egyptian army was destroyed. That was pretty cool. I guess we got to give Moses some props for that. But now, but now it's been a few weeks. It's been six weeks and it's stinking hot. Any provisions, any food supplies that we brought with us are now gone and the only thing that we have have to go on is this ancient promise that our parents told us about. This ancient promise that supposedly God promised to Abraham that he would become this great nation. I mean, really, take a look at us, all around us. How's that working out for us? Not so good. I mean, think about it. You can't, even pro you can't eat a promise from an ancient God, can you? We're hot and we're scared and we're hungry. Wouldn't it be better if we had stayed in Egypt? Even if we were brutally oppressed under Pharaoh working our tails off, at least we had food to eat while we were there. The Israelites were complainers. But can you blame them? They probably felt as if their life was out of control or, or was just getting plain old monotonous on their journey in the wilderness. They, they felt God was with them right after they left Egypt, bringing them out of that oppressive place, but now they couldn't seem to find meaning on their journey anymore. My friends, have you ever felt like this in your own life? Maybe there was a time in your life when you felt that God was real, that things were going, that were, things were really happening, that, that your faith seemed strong and solid, and that God seems to be very, very, really present and active in your life, and you thought that nothing could ever shake it. But maybe now you feel you're, like you're wandering in the wilderness of life that God doesn't seem to be anywhere to be found and there doesn't seem to be any meaning to anything. Going through the motions of what you once thought was the right path, but now you're second guessing it all and it's turning into this lifeless journey with no meaning to it at all. But my friends, there is hope and life found in joining God on this ongoing mission, just like the ancient Israelites rediscovered again and again over their centuries-long relationship with God, joining God on this journey, a journey unto which God invites us to join in on every day. Going back to the story of Exodus, God provided manna for the people. They complained of being hungry. God heard their complaints. God provided them manna from heaven, manna that came down and was available to them like dew on the grass. 
every morning. Every day, there, every morning there would be manna on the ground waiting for them to pick it up and use for the day. Manna. The literal meaning, get this, the literal meaning of the word manna is, what is it? Every day they ate, what is it? You can hear it, can't you? You can hear it, can't you? When the kids looked at their plates, another meal in which mom tried her best to work it into something tasty, and they probably stared at their plates and asked, what is it? And then mom's only, only response, of course, would be, exactly, yes. What is it? Every day they ate it, this manna from heaven. In this story, we are reminded, you and I are reminded, that God's people were nurtured with the question, what is it? And we can be nurtured by it as well. We can ask a similar question, what is it that you are doing, Jesus, in our lives today? It's a question that we can nurture us and get us along through the day, breaking through if we feel a monotony or a sense of out of controlness on our journey of faith but unfortunately for many of us, myself included, we don't like eating what is it because we prefer questions that always begin with what if. What if we could go back to Egypt? What if we could get out of this wilderness? What if we could just go back to the way things were in our life back then? What if we could go back to the way things used to be in the church? The problem is that what if questions only really refer to a longing for the way life we had in the past or even at times a longing for some other way of life in the future. But God's gift of manna like in the Exodus story could only be found in the present one day at a time. The man of the people found was new each day. My friends, our daily manna can be found in this daily renewed question. What is it that you are doing, Jesus? What are you up to in my life? What are you up to in our community and our world? This means paying attention to what God is up to around us and, and jumping in and participating alongside God's mission. God is at work indeed in the world, bringing about healing and reconciliation. And it's happening all around us, and God invites us to join, it, join in on it every day. We just need to pay attention, listen, and join in. Where is their need in our community that needs addressing? What do we have as part of who we are? that can be offered to the world? Where is it in, where is in our community and the world where there is hung, what are people hungry for? How can we be love and forgiveness and grace to the world around us? What is it? My friends, as we continue on this journey together here in Norland, we will be consistently asking the question for ourselves and as a community of faith together. Jesus, what is it? What is it that you are doing with which we need to jump on board? What is God calling us here at Nordland through the gifts that God has given to us, our people, our gifts, our resources for the sake, to use for the sake of loving the world that God so loves? in the weeks and months ahead. I look forward to engaging more and more of us in this conversation. What is God doing here and now? And how do we jump on board? So my friends, begin thinking about this question and what is your place in it? What is it? It's not a question of dwelling in the past, but a question that challenges us to pay attention to the here and now and the world that God has placed us, which can lead us to move forward towards the life in which God promises to us is full of life and abundance for the sake of the world.
This journey, my friends, is one that I am honored and thrilled and privileged to be a part of with you all. So let's go on this journey, continue on this journey together. Amen. Thanks be to God. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.